class and welcome back for another flex time review. In today's review, we're going to be focusing on the perceptual processes of bottom up and top down processing. I have found that these concepts can be fairly difficult to understand, so I'm going to do my absolute best to explain them in a way that you can easily understand. Let's get started. A big topic in the field of psychophysics is how exactly is sensation and perception related to our cognition? Remember, cognition just refers to our mental activities involved in acquiring, retaining, and using knowledge. So, are our perceptions going to be a result of our cognitive processes, or does sensory information from our environment direct these thought processes? As we have talked about previously, our senses are constantly registering a ton of stimuli from our environment then transmitting this information to our brain. I walk into my house and the light waves from my environment send my brain the images of my dogs. When my brain receives this message, it will do three things. First, it will organize the incoming sensory information. We will see the thalamus direct sensory information to the specific brain cortex. Then the brain will interpret this information, and if possible, it will relate it to existing knowledge. Psychologists are going to refer from this flow of sensory information from our environment to the brain as bottom-up processing. Bottom-up processing is also referred to as data-driven processing and is often at work when we are confronted with an ambiguous stimuli that we have no pre-existing knowledge of. To demonstrate how bottom-up processing works, I'm going to flash an image on the screen. When I flashed you this image, you first analyze the sensory input, such as the light patterns, shapes, or colors. This information is then relayed to the retina, where the process of transduction converts the light wave into a neural message that the brain can understand. These impulses pass into the brain where they trigger further responses along the visual pathways before reaching the occipital lobe for final processing. Your cognition is going to be guided by basic sensory information coming in from the outside environment. While bottom-up processing is data-driven, Top-down processing is going to be conceptually driven. Top-down processing emphasizes the importance of the observer's knowledge, expectations, and other cognitive functions in arriving at a meaningful perception. With top-down processing, your brain applies what it knows and what it expects to perceive and then fills in the blanks. To explain this type of processing, I'm going to bring back our bottom-up processing example. But this time, I'm going to add some context. Looking at our shape now, what do you see? Do you see the letter B? Now let's change it up a bit. What do you see now? Do you see the number 13? As you can see, your thought process or cognition was affected by the context provided with the stimulus. This is top-down processing because your prior knowledge and experience of letters and numbers influenced your perception of the shape. Another important psychology term and the perfect example for top-down processing is going to be the perceptual set. The perceptual set is going to be the mental predisposition to perceive one thing over another. Here's a picture. What do you see? Chances are you saw a dude jamming out on the sacks. With the rather ambiguous stimulus provided, how exactly did you come to this conclusion? My guess would be the sound of the saxophone and the music notes coming from the instrument led to your cognition. However, if we look closely at the image, we see that there is more to see than just a man playing the saxophone. We may also see a woman's face. <laughs> Now the interesting thing about a perceptual set is that once we've formed an idea about reality, we have a more difficult time seeing it from a different point of view. In our example, it may be harder for some of you now to look at this picture as a woman rather than a man playing the saxophone since I presented it first to you as the man playing the saxophone. This in turn creates a perceptual set for you for this image. Through our experiences, we form schemas which determine our perceptual sets. If we are presented with an ambiguous stimulus moving through the sky, different people may apply different schemas to what they think they see. Yeah. Is that a bird? Oh man, I think it's a plane. <laughs> nah, dudes, that's super stead. <laughs> Schemas may also help in explaining why this grilled cheese sold for $28,000. But what exactly explains why we see holy figures on the side of bread, or even faces on the surface of Mars? Research has shown that primate brains include specialized neurons that respond exclusively to faces or face-like stimuli, which may explain why our brain gives us several false positives of when we think we see faces. Just an example from my personal life, and I feel like I am not alone here. But whenever I'm driving and following the same car for a long time, I swear to you, the car starts to make faces at me. Schemas are not the only explanation for why a given stimulus may trigger different perceptions. We also have the context effect. The context effect is going to explain how environmental influences can direct perception. 
To explain the context effect, I want you to take a look at this symbol. What exactly does this symbol mean to you? How about we provide some context? What do we see? Did you read the cat? Notice how you had little trouble reading the symbol both as H and A in their appropriate context, even though they take on the same form? Pretty cool stuff that your brain's doing. Context effects are present in our daily lives as well, with things such as learning ability, memory, and object recognition. A huge topic of study in marketing, research has shown the context effect to have an extensive effect on consumer decisions. Research has even shown that the type of floor that a consumer is standing on while reviewing products can affect their assessment of the product. Top-down processing can lead to differences in perception from culture to culture, specifically relating to gender stereotypes. Research done in 1989 looked at how adults and children would respond differently to male and female infants because of an actual difference in the infants or because of preconceived gender stereotypes. When a baby was presented as David, people, especially children, perceived the baby as bigger or stronger. When that same baby was presented as Diana, people would perceive the baby as smaller. While top-down and bottom-up processing are opposite ways of processing information, we do use both in our everyday perception. I'm going to use this image to explain this. I want you to take a couple seconds to try and figure out exactly what you are looking at. Since this image is rather ambiguous, you will first have to rely on the basic sensory information you pick up. This is you using bottom-up processing. Once this information is in your brain, your brain will try and relate it to past experiences or schemas. When all this information is gathered, you might be able to come to the conclusion that what you are looking at is a cow. If you still can't see it, don't worry, I will point it out for you. Here we have the ears of the cow, those guys right there are the eyes, face and nose go right here, and here is the body. So as you can see, the cow is kind of just like facing this way and staring us down like this. If you were able to see the cow before I told you it was a cow, your brain was successfully able to relate this ambiguous stimulus to a pre-existing schema of a cow. So, that does it for top-down and bottom-up processing. As always, if you enjoyed, feel free to like and subscribe. This will notify you whenever I have a new video out. See you guys next time. Peace.